All right, so today we're going to um, show you how to make essential oils and hydrosols in a 20 liter still. So the parts of the still are the pot, the column, this is where the plant material goes in, the cap and gooseneck, and then the condenser. So what we'll do, my beautiful assistant here will load the column for me mm -hmm. while I continue okay. talking. <clears throat> okay. Load the column. So <laughs> the column is where we put the plant material and where we'll allow steam to enter. And if you can see, there are holes in the bottom of the column because this is a, this is a steam distillation. If we were to do a hydro distillation, we could put the plant material directly in the water and, and then put the cap on it. It's a different kind of distillation. What we want to do is steam. Steam distillation is my favorite. Mine too. Well, it's where you have the least room for error. So if you're a new distiller, steam distillation is the way yeah. to go. And you can use your most inexpensive plants like peppermints, um, spearmint, whatever you have a lot of. Lemon balm is a great one to start with. And um, do that in, uh, with a steam distillation, you'll get a lot of hydrosol, and you're probably not going to burn the still. This is why I like so it. So okay. if you were going to do a hydro <laughs> distillation, um, the things that you would do in that would be like uh, pine needles, pine cones, roots, um, also your delicates like your rose petals. So when packing a column, you want to pack it in layers, and you want to pack it down very well. So you don't lose steam up around the, the plant material. You want the steam to go through the plant material. Sometimes you get surprises. Yeah. <laughs> Pack it. So if I were going to be, if my objective was essential oil, I would really, really pack this very full. But because we want hydrosol, we're doing it a little bit loose and kind of in layers. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to install the column on the still. I preheated the water just to uh, get the ball rolling. Put the hinge pin in. Now if you would hand me the cap. Sure. So then the cap goes on. Oh, we said this is an alembic style yeah. still it's the the style has not changed in thousands of years and it is a really efficient way to to distill but it's also a stunning piece of equipment it's beautiful we've had people purchase them just for store displays it's okay not. so then you need to seal the <laughs> joints uh, traditionally they used a rye flour and just packed it in there and you get a bonus you get a cracker when you're done yeah you take the rye flour add a little bit of water you get a paste and put the paste around the seals to to seal it basically mm -hmm. and um, it's a in, more inexpensive way it's also the traditional way and if you have a very large still you are going to want to use rye yeah. when you have a smaller still like this this is 20 liters uh, plumber's tape is fine yeah. Teflon tape, you can get it at any hardware store. Okay, so once you've sealed up your still, you're gonna start your fire. Uh, we just hooked up to a propane tank like you'd have on your barbecuer. And to start it off and get things rolling, you want a nice high heat. Then you're waiting to boil water. So I'd like to talk a little more about the uh, condensing system. Um, you can do it several different ways. Uh, the way we like to do it is to have the drain hose go into a bucket of cold ice water with a small pump that pumps the water back into the bottom so you're continually recirculating your water and reusing it. Sometimes at home when we're doing demonstration we'll run the hose just over the rail of the back porch into the flower beds so it still serves a purpose. 
And then we just need to keep adding water to yep. the condenser if we do that. Yep. So the main thing is to keep the water in the condenser bucket cold. May I add something? Sir? Sure. So if we could show you what it looked like in the side of the condenser, we would, but now it's in it's this is called a bath. Um, so this copper extension continues down inside this condenser and there are coils that go around and around and around and finally come out. So the, the steam is turning back into water and again, the, um, that hot steam could destroy your essential oils and your hydrosols if you let it continue to be hot as it comes around and around inside the condenser. That's why you give it a cool bath because you really want to keep your product from getting overheated. And you want to turn it from a steam into another into a liquid. Back into a liquid. Back into exactly a liquid. right. So the reason you have a filter here is you do pick up uh, dust from the plant material. The speed of the drip, you yep. need to watch that. If it's pouring out yep. too fast, it's too hot. Yep. So you want to just bring the fire down. So yeah, we've got a pretty good it's running nice. pretty good, so I'm going to back the fire down just a little bit. If you are distilling with the objective of ha yep. getting hydro or getting essential oils, you pack the still really full, and you turn it on a bit hotter. It can go; it tends to go faster, and it doesn't. You, the run is not that long. Once you see the essential oils are not accumulating anymore, you know you've pretty much gotten the oils out of the plant. On the other hand, if what you want is hydrosol, the aromatic water portion of the distillation. Then you want to pack the still just a teeny bit less full so the steam can get through. And you want to do the distillation slower and longer. We're talking about components in the plant. The plant, of course, has essential oils. It's made up of hundreds of compounds. And some of those compounds go into the oil and some of the compounds go into the water. We call it hydrophilic and lipophilic. So the lipophilic compounds go right into the, hydrosol or the uh, essential oil and the hydrophilic compounds go into the hydrosol. Okay, so we're catching our hydrosol and essential oil in a separatory funnel. And as you know, uh, oil is lighter than water, so you can actually see the essential oil on top, and the little beads that you see on the side of the glass, that's essential oil, and your hydrosol is down below. So once we're done distilling, we'll turn the fire off, and then uh, drain the hydrosol out. And once we've got the hydrosol drained out, then with a separate container, we will uh, pull off the essential oil. But because we're after hydrosol and the way we pack the, the column, we're not obviously not getting a lot of essential oil. It takes a lot more plant material to produce an essential oil. You can imagine, I mean, if, you, if I have a handful of plant material like this, I could make, I don't know how much, but I can make a, a, a nice little amount of hydrosol. I would get four drops of essential oil from this. So you need a lot of plant material to glean the essential oil from the glands because there's only one part of the plant you want when you're trying to get the essential oil. When you're making the hydrosol, which is just the water portion of the distillation, you uh, get a lot of water for uh, the same amount of plant material. So it's just from a sustainability point of view, uh, hydrosols are, are just a lot more earth friendly. So depending on the plant that you're using will depend on whether you distill it fresh, fresh cut, or dried. Some plants, if they have a very slick leaf, you want to wilt them for a little while so that the water molecules have something to grab a hold of to so they can get the essential oils. Like eucalyptus, eucalyptus bay leaves, ones, they have bay the really leaves. shiny, yep. a smooth, really smooth cuticle. waxy plants. And not all plants have their essential oils on the outside, like peppermint, or the glands under, on the bottom of the leaf. But... Um, Whereas like the eucalyptus, bay, those are the two that are coming to my yeah. mind. The essential oil, now again, we're talking about if you want the oil, but the essential oil glands are deep inside the, the leaf. So that's another reason why you want to soften the cuticle by wilting it. Whereas lavender, most of the herbaceous Melaniaceae family, 
the essential oils glands are on the external part of the plant. So you don't have to do anything. They just put it in the pot and out they come. So with regard to using fresh versus dried plant material, it depends on the plant, really. If it's a plant that can, has a tendency to droop, that has cellular water, I love to use this fresh. The quicker you can cut it and get it in the still, the better it is. For one thing, there's this sort of magical, and I know it's not magical, but it's magical to me, a component called cellular water that contains a lot of the beautiful nutrients of the plants. As soon as you cut it, it starts to evaporate. So we want that good cellular water and the essential oils also will evaporate. So get that, cut the, um, your lavender, your peppermint, your calendula, and get it in the pot as soon as you can. If you wait a day, I mean, that's fine, but the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. So Jeannie Rose, who is one of our mentors, says, know what you grow and grow what you know and only distill what you know. So if you're really not sure about the safety of the plant, the chemical components, if, you, if it's a plant you're not familiar with, <clears throat> please do get some information about that before you distill it. So that concludes our distillation. So now we're going to break it down and to clean it you would want to take citric acid, about a cup of citric acid to a gallon of water, rinse everything out, take the coil snake, run it down through the coils so you get it nice and clean, and then uh, on to the next distillation. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.